And Secretary Daley, thank you so much for joining us, of course, the uh, White House Chief of Staff. Um, I want to start this off sort of in a little bit of a, a fun way, um, get some insight about you and, and your position, and start by asking you, how do you start your day, and what do you read first? Um, <laughs> I read the uh, Post and the New York Times because they're delivered. I'm still actually open a paper. Um, and then I go online and begin to read uh, the Times and the Financial Times and the Journal and the Chicago Tribune, um, just to make sure I can watch what my predecessor's doing. <laughs> Um, so that when he calls 10 minutes later, I can harass him about something. Does but, Rom call uh, you a lot? We talk a lot, yeah. Yep, yep. And, and what does he and, say? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, being recorded, isn't it? So, you want to know what he, how he says what he says, and uh, you don't know him if you have to hear it from somebody else. Um, and then I'm usually in by 7 and uh, start with the 7.30 meeting of the senior staff, and we do an 8.30 a meeting with about 50 people of the, uh, the leadership of the entire West Wing and OVOB, uh, and then the day begins and finishes up usually, at least I leave somewhere around 7, 7.30. You joined the White House in January. You had previously worked in the Clinton administration as the Secretary of Commerce. How would you say President Obama and President uh, Clinton are different? <laughs> Um, well, I mean, think about that. Um, there's lots of ways they're different. Obviously, uh, the times are very different, which I think um, when you look at presidents, it isn't just their personality or their style of management. It's the times in which they're in. President Clinton was a, um, a very different, he, he was um, um, somebody who expressed himself quite a bit uh, and rather vocally. Uh, he was very... Um, open in his emotions and, and the way he conveyed it to his uh, feelings to people. Uh, President Obama, as people have said, is, you know, no drama Obama. He's very steady, controlled, uh, constantly uh, searching for more information. Bill Clinton also was, but, but it's just stylistically they're, they're very different. Uh, but the times really, uh, I think, impact um, how they operate and how they manage more so than even their personalities, to be very frank with you. Uh, you were brought into the White House and there was a lot of discussion you were going to strengthen ties uh, with Capitol Hill, with the business community. How's that going? Oh, it's going great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can't you tell? I mean, you know, things are just really great. The debt ceiling was no problem and the business community loves us and they love the rhetoric and they just... They, no problems. Um, no, it's, look at these are tough times for American people and, and the difficulties in this town politically, um, I know Senator Rubio is on next, uh, is just is much more reflective of what's going on out there in America. Uh, what happens in this town is much more reflective than we sometimes like to admit. So the difficulty politically, we have been a divided nation politically for a very long time. If you look back at the elections of, of the last number of years, 08, and some, to some degree, was an aberration. Uh, 04 was a relatively close election, 60,000 votes in Ohio, and you would have had a different outcome. 2000, which I chaired Al Gore's campaign, was 500 votes in Florida. Uh, 96, Bill Clinton got less than 50% of the vote, and then 92 got less than 50% of the vote. So for the, for the last uh, number of years, uh, America is divided, and you've had these enormous swings 06, 08, 10, uh, and the American people are, are you know, stressed out, uh, but they're, it's an extremely volatile, volatile uh, political season right now. And the, I think there's no just, doubt there's been a history of polarization, but what would you say about the state of the relationship between the White House and Republicans on Capitol Hill? Well, I think it's, um, I think the Republican mantra starting in 09, shortly after the president was inaugurated of basically, you know, we're going to take a position, a very hardline position of no, uh, and that's pretty much been it. When the majority, when the minority leader, pardon me, of the Senate says my number one goal is to defeat the president, that's a pretty amazing statement. Uh, and I, I mean, we all believe him, and that is his goal, and that is his objective. And he's every day trying to accomplish his objective. That puts a certain uh, uh, different twist on trying to get accommodation. The president came to town to try to have a different voice, uh, a less shrill voice, 
uh, someone who's, who, as he did in previous uh, positions in Illinois, was very much bringing people together. But it's, it's proven to be much more difficult than I think he or anyone else thought it would be. But I was in the press briefing room uh, with you uh, this summer uh, when the president came in, gave us about a five-minute notice, came in at 6 o'clock to announce that he had just received a call from Speaker Boehner, uh, they, that they were breaking off talks on uh, the debt ceiling. And the question I asked at that time to the president was, it seems like there's been an extraordinary breakdown of trust. Are you guys even talking anymore? Do you talk yeah, we, to? We, sure, I, I talk to the speaker. The president speaks to the leadership. Um, but there's no question uh, that, and it's partly because of the, in my opinion, you've got the, as happens every cycle, the presidential elections begin earlier than ever anyone likes, but every cycle it, we all complain about it, but we all participate in it. Uh, so you, you have that going even earlier than usual. And I think that impacts, obviously, the Hill and impacts the politics on the Republican side. We don't have a primary going on, so that's a little different. And it, it's well known that there's a struggle within the Republican Party as to what is the actual heart and soul of the Republican Party. You had an election in the fall uh, that was very much driven by a wing of the party that became much, much more energized, much more aggressive. Uh, the leadership that came in on that wave was not part of that wave. Um, and so that, that presents a struggle within their caucus, and we've watched that play out in the debt ceiling, and that continues to play out in, in other votes. Uh, so they're, they're going just, through struggles also. But is it um, the president has been out on the road and uh, blaming Republicans and is now naming right. uh, names uh, specifically. Uh, talked about uh, Mr. Cantor yesterday, Congressman Cantor. But isn't, it the, isn't there a, an issue with the Democrats, too, on the Hill? I mean, there are currently no co-sponsors of the president's jobs bill, his number one priority. And, and uh, Durbin, Senator Durbin, has said the Democrats don't have the vote, and Harry Reid has been reluctant to schedule uh, a vote. The senator is going to schedule, is, said today in a press conference, uh, that the vote will be very shortly. There's no question in my mind. We didn't think it would be before <laughs> mid to end of October, and that's going to happen, as is we're dealing with the trade agreements, we're dealing with TAA. Uh, the Congress, which, as you may have noticed, uh, has a rather light schedule you, uh, lately, uh, but they've got a lot of things on their plate. So trying to tee up issues uh, and get them through is very difficult con considering the schedule. I think the House leaves have, after three weeks, they take a week off and go back in district, not imply that it's a vacation. Um, but they take about every third week off. So but there isn't you, a lot of time. What do you think has happened? I mean, uh, as a senator said to me the other night that um, Tip O'Neill and Bob Michael spoke more in one day than, than Boehner and Pelosi speak in a year. What's happened? I think um, I'm one who believes that uh, our politics, you know, lots of people say, oh, it's, it's, a, it's not as civil as it used to be, and well, if only the politicians could get together. Uh, the truth is our overall society has gotten less civil to each other. Uh, what's popular on TV? Reality TV shows that are generally somebody doing something outrageous or obnoxious or treating somebody in an obnoxious way. Uh, and uh, we can't think that somehow politics is separate from that or that's separate from politics. So I of often think about the incivility that seems to be in politics is, is a little more reflective of the incivility that may be going on in our general society, uh, which is not a positive thing to say, obviously. But, um, but there, is not, there is not the engagement anymore um, that there used to be. And we've heard the story. Senators go home much more now than they used to. Not as many live here. A congressman running every two years and the cost of it um, and, and the fear of, um, of being out of a job as opposed to, you know, if you lose your job uh, and they'll get another one. That, that it's, it's created a very different climate that even 10 years ago when I was here under Clinton, President Clinton, um, you could just feel it's very different. Just one more on this, and then we'll move on to other issues about um, the economy and foreign policy. But, but do, you, um, do you take some responsibility for the relations with um, Capitol Hill and with Speaker Boehner? Oh, I, I, I think there's no question that um, I would, yeah, I, I would take some responsibility for the, um, for the relationship that's part of my job. 
I think everybody in this room, everybody in media, everybody in this town, everybody in active in politics has to take responsibility for some of the, the way our pol political system has gone. Um, it's unfortunate, but it has not only gotten less civil, um, uh, it's a, there's a whole bunch of uh, changes that have occurred and very recently. Just your business, you know, how people get their news and what's news anymore is debatable. Um, you know, is John Stewart news or is it entertainment? He'll make the arguments to entertainment. Lots of people watch it and think it's news. So those are things you struggle with, I know, um, in your business. But the impact on the political system is enormous. Uh, on the economy, I want to get you on um, the Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, of course, made news yesterday when he told Congress that the recovery is close to faltering. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it's pretty uh, obvious that the expectations of the first half of this year uh, for a stronger second half and a stronger 12 uh, are not going to be uh, fulfilled. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the president put together the American Jobs Act uh, in order to try to create uh, economic growth and jobs. Uh, I think if, if the pre predictions that had been for most of the spring, through the spring, had been fulfilled in the second half, I don't think you'd have the pressure uh, at least the, the impetus probably for us to feel so strongly that we've got to do something to create jobs and some economic growth. Uh, and that's what the president announced a month ago and is fighting to try to get a vote in uh, the Senate uh, next week or the week after. And hopefully at some point uh, the House will, will deal with a job creating uh, bill uh, in order to put some buffer uh, so that uh, the expectation of some that the economy may slip backwards, we've got some buffer to try to stop that. And most independent analysts uh, who analyzed the um, president's job package uh, said it would add a point to a point and a half in GDP growth and a million to 1.7 million jobs. But, but there's no, no expectation that the president's full bill will be passed. We know that. It's dead on arrival, the full well, thing in the house. Well, eternal. I, I don't... I, to say it's dead on arrival, uh, my answer is that may be someone's political judgment. Okay, if it is, what's the uh, what, what's the plan of other people? The president put the put a package forward. No one else has put a package forward that can be independently analyzed and decided whether it creates jobs or causes economic growth. So he's led. He's put something on the table. Don't just say no. Have something that's real, not some talking points. Something that can be scored and by outside analysts, not political. Uh, inside analysts or think tanks that are in the tank with whatever side uh, you, you may be, and there are plenty of them, as we know, in this town. Um, so I, I, my, you know, my challenge to everyone else who runs around and says, well, his jobs package is dead, then what are you going to do for the economy as opposed to just talk about it? But this plan, if it is passed, outside analysts, independent, will say that it will be positive. So let's get it on. Let's call the question, have the vote. And if it doesn't pass, there is a responsibility of those who vote against it to have a plan, or else they're just going to say to the American people, we don't need something. Given uh, Chairman Bernanke's comments yesterday, how worried are you about another recession? Well, I think the general consensus of the experts is that you won't have a recession, another recession, a double dip or a new dip. Um, but I think what's going on in Europe causes, as you can see in the marketplace, great concern. Uh, the president uh, speaks to the European leaders quite often, um, and the expectation is that they will take action to prevent um, serious uh, negative uh, results that would cause the world to slip back even further than we are. But uh, we follow it. We're very concerned about um, the possibility. Uh, but the expectations as of right now is that we would not see a, a, a double dip. I hope you know the White House press corps is hanging on every word that you say. <laughs> That's why I usually don't do this. <laughs> exactly. It is. It is. Because Bradley I mean, and Walter. Yeah, it is. It is a real it. treat. I don't to know have why the... I said yes to this. To you. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting started. I, I know. That's the problem. Um, the super committee. Yep. Um, as many people know, they've got to come up with the, those cuts uh, mandated by uh, the um, a debt ceiling deal. Uh, they've got to do it by Thanksgiving. Um, 
How likely do you, do you think it is that they'll be able to get their work done? Do you think it's a 50-50 chance? How would you rate? Well, I haven't gone through the uh, 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 debt ceiling uh, negotiations with the speaker and twice. Uh, I know how hard it is to come up with yeah. a balanced package. Um, if it's not a balanced package, you're not going to get uh, a, a decision and we'll have a sequester in 13. Uh, our hope is, and the president here too, put a $3 trillion package forward and people can just say it's real or it's not real or whatever and it was balanced with revenue and, and real entitlement, more entitlement cuts than we've seen in a very, very long time, if ever, in actual dollars. Um, and um, so if, if that's not going to be acted on and the committee's going to come up with $1.2 trillion, that obviously is the minimum they, they should come up with. I think it is well intended. I think the membership uh, is, is, are truly the leaders of Congress. Um, and if they can't do something bold, uh, then that, that would be another sort of uh, damnation of the system. And that would be unfortunate. My expectation is, I don't want to give percents, uh, they know it. I've talked to almost all of them. Um, and they're sincere, but they're also finding out uh, how difficult it is. And then to build a coalition, even within the 12, uh, to get seven to five or eight to four, I don't think it's a one, one, one member of the Republican Party jumps over with the Democrats or one Democrat jumps over the Republicans. I think there's got to be a, a broader consensus in order for our analogy was always in our negotiations. Let's all hold hands and jump off the edge, not knowing if there was a net, but at least you were holding hands with somebody when you hit the floor. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you about 2012 in a minute, but I do want to ask you about Al Qaeda following the killing on Friday of Anwar al Waki. Back in July, Secretary of Defense uh, Panetta said the strategic defeat of Al Qaeda is within reach. How close uh, do you believe we are to that goal? You were there for bin Laden and um, the Friday news on Friday. I think the uh, Friday uh, action um, was a a very substantial uh, has a very substantial impact on Al Qaeda and those who want to do harm to the homeland. Uh, there are lots of people around the world who are terrorists, but there are a few. How close to very, strategic defeat? I think we're we're uh, we're very close, but. Uh, this is the sort of organization that we will be vigilant for as long as we are all alive because they can rear their heads in parts of the world and in ways that uh, we, we just historically have not been used to. But uh, the aggressiveness of the last three years uh, by this president, who, let's be honest, lots of people when he ran were, oh, you know, he's a community activist. What does he know about, you know, all of these very difficult, complex foreign policy and, and uh, military issues. Um, I would say that this president has proven a certain steel uh, without using techniques that made America less popular in the world uh, in a way that's been aggressive far beyond any administration that's uh, occupied this uh, office in recent times. Liz Cheney is sitting over there, but she'll have a moment to respond to that uh, later. Um, I'm sure she'll have more than a moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, 20, 2012, which Republican are you most worried about running against? Uh, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> is he not in? Oh. I don't know. You know, it's 12, four, who knows? Uh, what do you think of Mitt Romney? Uh, I've never met him, so uh, I don't – look at it. The, whoever the Republican Party nominates will be a formidable candidate because the nation is very divided. Uh, we are in a very difficult time. People are very nervous about the future. We've seen these enormous swings, as I said, in 10 and 8 and 6. and So we've seen them uh, uh, all over. Um, so it's it, – this is a difficult time for America. So if you're a – in any incumbency, if you're the CEO of a company, if you're an anchor on a network, you better worry about your job every day, okay? And so 
uh, this will be a very close. Unless you're David new to Rhodes is still here. Uh, unless, uh, uh, so it, it is. It is going to be a very tough, close election. Uh, I don't care, and that's how we approach it. That's how the president approaches it, and um, you know, bring it on. Okay, Margaret has some questions from Twitter, but I have to ask one more real quick, which is that you played golf. Um, president Obama played with President Clinton recently. You were part of that foursome. Who won? Um, I think it was, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest with you, you don't keep score when you play with Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a friend, okay? <laughs> And he's played pretty well, to be very frank with you. But but uh, we had a lot of fun. It was a it was a it was a fun day, and the pres President Clinton looked great, and President Obama and he it was probably as much time as they've been able to spend together. Um, and you know, we just kind of all, all all of us literally hacked around the course for four hours. So so that's about what we did. Margaret Carlson has some questions. Uh, how many Billigans were there? Um, you know. I don't play for money, so I don't really care. If someone wants to say you shot a 40, shoot a 40. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have some uh, audience questions. How big a hole am I in with you already? <laughs> uh, pretty <laughs> deep. Pretty deep? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but thank you for coming. Oh, yes. thank you. Uh, from the audience, what has been your best and worst day so far? Uh, Not in your whole life. I think just in the White House. Yeah. But you could do your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, no. Um, the best day, to be frank with you, was the uh, Sunday of Osama bin Laden. I was one of the only non, may have been the only non-national security person uh, in the White House who knew from the first day I got here or got to the job. Um, they in the PDB. Um, I don't know if I. Uh, anyway, it was mentioned this. You, you, you this, can do uh, it. You can do it. Probably gonna. Uh, it, this compound, and I thought, gee, that's interesting. And um, so that, that Sunday, and they, the, seeing the thing progress over the months, um, and the dedication and focus of the intelligence agencies and the military, and the way they work together, and to pull that off, um, you know, there were people in that room uh, who had for 10 years been trying to find this fellow. And so that would be the, the highlight of, um, uh, of that would probably have been the best day in the nine months that I've been there. Probably the uh, worst day in, a, in, in that sense was in, in a sense was the um, uh, when the debt ceiling when, when we thought we were so close on a deal that I believe would have really made, had an impact on our country on our economy and it fell apart on the debt ceiling um, was probably the, the worst day of the nine months. Well, we only have uh, a minute left, so I'm not going to ask. But uh, one of the questions they wanted to ask was, how do women get along in the White House? Now, you've been pretty good to Nora and me here, but how is it in the White House No, uh, since I'm not a woman, women? I, it's hard for me to <laughs> answer that. Um, I don't, you know, I read they this complain? in the book, but that was from my, during my predecessors here. I, I, I get, <laughs> um, look at, um, I, I've not sensed um, any problem um, and I think speaking to, and I know both Valerie and Melody uh, will be here later on. They probably obviously can answer that. Um, we have a um, great relationship in the senior staff and I think throughout the administration. And that comes from the top down. The president has, through his campaigns and, and through the issues that he's fought for, uh, obviously has fought and, and been on the edge on women's issues. So I don't um, see it as a... Um, I didn't even read the book, but I but I did heard that hear that uh, there were some issues early on under a predecessor of mine. So I can dump on him for that. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you, you phone him tomorrow morning. Yeah. No, he'll probably phone me. He's probably watching this thing. <laughs> Back to you, to Nora. Do. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, please thank um, the chief of staff, Thanks, the president's Nora. chief of staff, for being here, William Daly.